welcome to another installment of Flex Connector Training. Um, my name's Shane. I, you may see, you may have seen some other um, entrants, entrants by myself uh, for different types of flex connectors with regex um, and so forth. Uh, I'm busily writing these flex connector training videos, um, taking a little bit longer than expected because obviously I've got a job um, dealing with ArcSight day to day. And so uh, it's really only after hours that I can uh, get a chance to do some of this work. So, so what's today's session all about? Well, what I wanted to cover off today was a bit more of a, a personal one uh, in terms of uh, data ingestion and, and, and event ingestion. But I think it has some really nice um, points to drive home some of the different ways you can get events into, into uh, ArcSite. Uh, so it think, covers off things like a flex connector agent within a within a syslog daemon. Um, it also starts to look at HP logger as well. Um, I tend to use logger a lot uh, for basic ingestion and retrospective searches and so forth. It's it's one of the unsung heroes in the ArcSight suite, and I think uh, a lot more value can be driven and out driven out of it uh, by by people if they're using it. So if you're familiar with Splunk. Um, picking up a HP logger will be very, very easy uh, for you to do. So, <clears throat> what are we going to do? Um, well, I thought today we'd actually deal with um, uh, bringing in syslog from airport, Apple Airport access points. Um, they, they, they allow you to uh, push syslog to a particular um, syslog connector but it's not particularly useful, um, and it's not not really well parsed. Um, if you drive it through our standard syslog connector, it will actually be picked up as Cisco router uh, um, syslog, and the security use case that I'm actually interested in is um, basically getting associations and disassociations with the wireless network. Uh, even though I've got WPA2 encryption on the network, I'd like to understand who is and is not associating. I'd like to look for association floods, for example, you know, multiple attempts to associate, <clears throat> and maybe even also uh, use Logger or ESM to then compare those devices successfully or unsuccessfully attempting to associate against a known list of MAC addresses. Now, obviously, that's not, that's not great security, um, you know, MAC address spoofing is relatively easy to do these days, but as an indicator of you know, drive-bys and so forth, um, or maybe just a home hobby thing of interest, which is what, which is what has driven me to do this one, uh, may, be quite, may be quite interesting. So, what does, the, what does the syslog from um, one, of these, one of these Apple airports look like? And quite simply, it's not particularly complex at all. Um, <coughs> it is, I've captured some of the raw logs. And this is what it looks like. It's really quite simple. So we've got our standard syslog header here and through to here, which is basically our host name. So this is my Apple Airport sitting in my lounge room. Then I've got another one in my family room. I've got one out in the garage and so forth. I've got them all over the shop. Um, <clears throat> with lots of different devices like this and the fact that you know, my wireless can spread outside of my home, it gets to the front garden, it gets to the back garden and so forth. There's certainly an opportunity for people to, to start associating, associating or at least attempting to associate. Um, you'll find a lot of different messages around key rotation and so forth within syslog from the Apple airports. That goes for the extremes and the expresses. Now you'll need to set syslog parsing or syslog forwarding in the actual airport utility. So that's not hard to do either. Um, <clears throat> but I'm really only interested in this, these two messages, so disassociated and associated. And from there, I'm going to extract a MAC address. And there's a bunch of different ways I can do it. Um, I can do it very easily through, with Logger. But let's say I wasn't using Logger or um, I'm using ESM for my st security correlation. Um, but you know, in, in a small environment, doing this in Logger would be really, really effective and a good way to go. So let's, let's have a look at, um, if you've seen my previous sessions, I've actually gone about using the ArcSight regex tool. 
Now, where do we find the regex tool? It's actually built into the into the Smart Connector framework. So if you're a ArcSite customer and you've got the Smart Connector framework, uh, you automatically have access to this. It's really just a case of learning how to actually use it. So we can just type in ArcSite regex. And I should add, um, if you are a customer of ArcSite, um, you should, uh, strictly speaking, have purchased the Flex Connector Framework. Even though it's included in the Smart Connector Framework, uh, it is actually a separate license. Uh, so to actually utilize these tools and to drop your own Flex Connectors in, uh, strictly speaking, by the, by the license, you should, you should purchase a Flex Connector license. Uh, so have a chat to your local ArcSite rep about that. It's not a difficult task. Um, so let's let's have a look at what we've we've got here. Um, when you when you build a uh, basically a, a flex connector or a flex agent you know, parser override, so to speak, um, you can basically drop it into the smart connector framework and almost run as a flex flex agent under a standard syslog daemon, and that's what I'm going to do today. So what I mean by that is. I'm going to use a standard syslog agent and I'm going to drop in my own little flex agent like it's almost like a sub, sub it's a sub parser it's a sub agent it's going to get picked up by the framework during runtime so let me show you how that works so we're in here okay the syslog 514 current user agent directory so that's effectively oops this is effectively my the start of my uh, syslog um, connector. I go into current user agent. Now, if you're familiar with the connector, the connector framework, you know that's where this is where a lot of the magic is. So, files like agent.properties, for example, is the main properties file for the for the connector. We have a quick look at that so we're familiar with what's going on here. You'll see that it is basically a, um, a syslog daemon running on 514, UDP, uh, listening on all, pi, all IP addresses, so nothing, nothing particularly fancy about that. But as we go on in a couple of minutes, you'll start to see some interesting differences which will uh, show you that there are there is a, extra pieces going on here. Um, if you're not familiar with some of the directories within the agent uh, uh, framework, under agent data, this is where you'll find basically the front side buffering and so forth of events. So this is this is where you'll find basically if you see files uh, underscore q dot syslog d dot zero, they're basically events that are being fed into the system into the system. They're basically the events as they're being processed. So when you're developing this type of this type of flex connector and you're you know debugging and making sure it works and so forth, one of the things you really want to do is when it's not running, delete everything in that directory. That flushes out any old events that may have been misparsed and, and so forth, uh, which may pop up in your logger or your ESM uh, as incorrect and it might might uh, throw you off your path. So I always delete all that stuff. What we're interested in here is uh, what we call the flex agent directory. Now, under the flex agent directory, the smart connector framework will read in any dot properties files that it finds in here and add them to the sub agent uh, um, list. Now, what is that sub agent list? The sub agent list is actually in your agent dot properties file. So you'll see custom agent list here as a property. By default, these are all the syslog parsers that we support out of the box. So even though there's only one syslog daemon, it's able to handle dozens and dozens and dozens. I, don't, I actually don't even know how many there are here. There's, there could be well over 50 of them here. Everything from Cisco, ICE to Nagios to, what else are we got in there? Air Magnet, I know there's McAfee stuff in there, I know there's Blue Coat stuff in there, ProSafe, never even heard of them. Um, so what basically happens with the syslog sub, the sub agents is that um, it get, the, when it gets syslog into the system, it goes through this list from left, left to right and then tries to work out what it may be, what 
device it may be talking to or, or talking to it. When it finds a match through the first piece of regex that it finds for each of these sub-agents, it then says, okay, great, that's a match. So I'll then, from then on end, only use that particular sub-agent, let's say it's a source via device, for that particular host or that, that source host. So what I mean by that is, when we go back to, back to user agent, when you run the syslog daemon for the first time, or any time I should say, when you um, have new devices and so forth starting to feed in syslog, it creates a, a, prop, a properties file called syslog.properties. And what happens here is that for every host that is feeding syslog in, it will actually attach the exact sub-agent that, that, it, that, should be, that it should be using to parse the, parse the syslog that's coming in from that particular host. So you'll see here I've got my Apple Airport lounge room is using the flex agent syslog. So in other words, it's not using anything in that particular list, um, you know, like uh, uh, Cisco or, or um, Aruba or something like that as a wireless access point. It's using the flex agent syslog. So where do we find this flex agent syslog? It is under flex agent, as we were before. And because it's syslog, I go into the syslog directory and I'll find that if I if I want to write a flex agent for syslog, I'd po I'd pop it in this directory flex agent syslog. Now, what I need to do is give it a name. I'll just call it Apple Airport. Then I have to make sure that the pre uh, the postfix for the or the suffix for the file name is dot subagent dot stkr file reader dot properties. Now we're familiar with that from my other. Flex, flex uh, connector video. So we should be pretty comfortable with that, that notion. So what happens is when the, when the connector framework loads up, it's gonna go into this flex agent directory. It's gonna traverse all these subdirectories and look for sub agents, custom sub agents. And it's going to add, that to, add those to the list of uh, agents that are uh, potentially used in sub agent parsing. Now, where do they fall? Where do these fall in the order of uh, operation? Where do they fall in terms of um, priority? And what we've got to do here is because this is basically from left to right, we want to look for the flex agent. The flex agent. You'll see way down here, almost at the end, flex agent syslog. So that means if I've got a if I've got an Apple Airport device and its regex, its its syslog looks very very similar to say I don't know just for example Cisco Airspace which is further to the left, it's going to be more likely to be tagged as a Cisco device rather than an Apple Airport device. So be careful about that. If your if your device is being picked up as something now I had this exact problem when I started writing this this flex connector. Um, just just the other day, it was being picked up as a Cisco router. Why? The Cisco router was further to the left in terms of these sub-agents than flex agent. A way you could get around it is, of course, is to basically grab that um, flex, flex agent underscore syslog and then move it up to the front of the list here. And what that would do is it would force the, 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 the parse of framework to look at your flex agents first before any standard smart connectors. That's one way of getting around it. Um, now, what you also need to do is just say, if you do make any changes to this list, um, in terms of order, adding names, deleting names, etc., you want to uh, change use custom agent sublists uh, to true. Now, in my case, uh, I deleted my Cisco router underscore syslog to make my flex agent be recognized higher up in the chain. Now that's not a great way to do it. Um, when I come to finish off this flex connector, I will actually change that. <coughs> so let's, let's, let's take it to the next step. Minimize that. Let's take a look at my actual sub-agent parser. 
It's really, really simple. It's, I would argue, very, very poor regex. It definitely needs work. Uh, anyone in HP professional services will probably be laughing at this right now in terms of its uh, uh, very, very loose regex. So all I'm doing here, if I take a look at the sample file, uh, my sample log file, where is it? Here we go. All I'm doing is, as you'll know from my previous videos, disregarding the syslog header, that standard RFC syslog header. I'm basically grabbing this as my sub-message token. Now, because this, that's the only sub-message that I'm interested in, it's literally just a single sub-message with one or more patterns, and the patterns are disassociated and associated. There's other things like key rollovers and so forth. I honestly don't care about them, so I'm not going to worry about them. Now, that may be okay for your situation, but in a typical situation, certainly when professional services write these flex connectors, they will write fully fledged uh, flex, fully parsed and documented um, regects for each and every single possible uh, event. Whereas what I'm doing here is I'm just picking and choosing what I want. All right, so you'll see here from my sample data that I'm literally just picking up that 80211. I'm then grabbing the rest of it and throwing it in a single token. So my first one is the ID. And now if there were other IDs apart from 80211, great, I'd take advantage of that. But in this case, I've only got one. So literally, I've got one sub-message with two patterns. My first pattern is associated with station, and my second pattern is disassociated with station. Now look, there's more than one way to do this. I've done it this way. I, I prefer to do uh, sub-message patterns like this because then I can build upon this more easily. I could have been even more lazy if I wanted to, but I thought I should, I thought I should do some things uh, by the book. Um, I'm going to set my device vendor to a string constant, Apple. Um, I'm going to set the overall message to message. I don't really need that, um, but it will, it will pop up in logger and ESM as my message. Um, I've also got device product as Apple Wireless. Now, because I've got an airport, I've got multiple airport extremes and multiple airport expresses, I thought I'd just leave it as the, the product as being airport wireless. Probably the best thing to do. So, let's take a look at this sub message stuff. I've got this message ID. 80211, as we saw from our uh, from our sample data, just that bit there. That's basically the first token beyond the standard syslog header. Nice and easy. Um, <clears throat> the actual regex pattern associated with station, and then I've just just taken this very lazy, very greedy regex just to grab the entire MAC address, as you see there. Disassociated or associated with station, and then my MAC address. Obviously, I, I should be doing that a little, little bit more tightly, but I'm not. Um, what you can do also is to say in the next line, this particular token uh, is a MAC address. Now, if we were to say um, something like that, we might say my token type here is going to be a MAC address. So it's not a string, it's not an integer, it's not a float. It's a MAC address. And if I had some, and some other token here uh, as a string, I'd just do a comma string. And then I might have, uh, if there are other tokens that I was interested in, I might do that. And, and in that case, that might be an integer, for example, or a long. doesn't really matter. One of those. If I had others to put in there. But in this case, I've only got one token, which is a MAC address. So I'm basically forcing that token to be to be treated as a MAC address by the uh, the system itself. Right. So that means if I've already cast it to a MAC address, that's fantastic because now what I can do is my dot fields. I can now just make them. I can now just uh, assign the address directly. Assign assign the value directly. Event dot source MAC address is my MAC address, which is this first token. Great. Um, I could just keep this all as a string and then just um, copy it to event.device string one, 
I think that's even more lazy than what I normally am. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the right thing and stick it in a source MAC address uh, field, which is where it really should go. Now, if you're familiar with sort of the best practices for a, uh, a Flex connector or even any smart connector, um, the event name should not contain any variables. It should be pretty much a static string. So what I've done here is. I've said, well, when I've got an association, I'll do what's called an extra mappings. Extra mappings are fantastic. What that allows me to do is set something like event.name as a string constant. You'll be familiar with this from my previous videos and the Flex Connected guide. A device associated with the wireless network. That's great. Nice and simple. It's static. It's always going to be the same. So if I'm in logger or ESM, I could very easily do a search on that phrase if I really wanted to. Same thing goes for a disassociation. I've created, I've done an extra mapping for event.name where a device has disassociated from the network. So very, very easy to um, ascertain which one is which when you come to search time. So you'll notice that yes, I've probably done a lot of this in um, in this in this notepad. But let's let's go into the old regex tool and, and uh, give it give it a go. Now, as you've seen in my previous videos, this tool is great for getting you started, but don't go too deep with it. Otherwise, you'll start losing configuration. You'll, you'll get frustrated with it because it doesn't handle each and everything that, the, that, that you are able to do with a connector. My strong recommendation is to utilize the Flex Connector Guide. This is really, really important. And of course, you can grab this from uh, Protect 724, if I remember correctly. Latest version is 30th of June this year, 2015. So, in the case of the extra mapping stuff, uh, there's a really there's some really good examples there of how to actually use this stuff. So, um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can set with extra mappings. But you can see here extra mappings event dot name equals and then a string constant, which is, is exactly what we've done in our particular flex connector below. So some really valuable stuff in there, guys. Uh, make sure you take take note of it and utilize it. So if I load my log file here, as we've done in the past, uh, it's already loaded. You'll see as I run through uh, the actual test file, which is just this test file here, um, I'm getting associations against pattern zero and pattern one. So you'll see that that's pattern zero. It's an association. Um, I'm going with pattern one because it's a disassociation. You'll see that the event device vendor and product is being set. Um, and then you'll also see event.name being sent to a string, string constant. Uh, I'd be cautious in doing all this extra mappings and so forth in this tool. Probably something best to leave, you leave to Vi, Notepad, Notepad++, whatever your favorite text editor is, do it manually. This tool won't handle it very well. Uh, you're, in actual fact, if I try and save that, that might actually, it, sometimes it will actually delete these lines. It just doesn't understand it. If it doesn't understand it, it just kills it. So as you can see there, as, as previous videos, all yellow means all good. It means we're parsing it correctly. You'll also notice here that the, uh, the syslog sub message, uh, the syslog uh, header is being ignored. So when you do this, when you set up this 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 particular flex connector, just like we did with other syslog type connectors, make sure you switch on treat as syslog subagent. Very important. Otherwise, you'll be writing regex for all of this, and then when you come to come to have your events ingest, you'll you'll wonder why it's broken and doesn't work. Uh, you've gone and put in all that extra work to parse this stuff when you don't need to. And that's the job of the, the framework or the connector framework already. So here's our overall finished, our finished file. If we now, now one thing I'm also asked is how do we get these raw, these raw events um, unadulterated? I find a really good way to do it is feed them directly into logger. So what you can do is, this is logger 6.1, you can feed them as raw from the devices directly at logger. Uh, so 
Uh, you could do receivers here. If we go into the receiver section, you'll see that you're able to have raw UDP receivers, for example. So you could just point your source device, like in our case, the uh, airport wireless device at this UDP receiver and you would receive absolutely raw dev device events, including the syslog header and so forth. Fantastic. But I like to run everything through con uh, smart connectors because you've got a lot of extra functionality built into the connectors. So it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> So if I go into Shane Syslog, and there's a lot of other stuff coming in here, in here by the way. It's not just not just some airport stuff. It's also um, it's also some uh, uh, a lot of uh, Syslog from Firewall and so forth, DNS, DHCP, and so forth. Um, not a lot's coming through there, as we expect. Let's just try and find something so I can give you an example. There we go, there's some Apple stuff there. What I've got here is, let's change it to my Apple Airport fields. Now, the nice part about this is a little bit out of scope, so I, don't, I won't go into a lot of detail as to how this works, but we're able to capture the entire raw event. You capture that entire raw event, you then do an export, and from there, those search results, you'll capture all of those raw events. So we could just say, no, we just want just that one event as a CSV file, export that. It's going to basically do that search. Then we can open open that CSV file. So we'll go here. And if we then just edit that with notepad, there is our wonderfully raw event um, you'll probably want to just delete the full uh, the double quotes there on either end um, then you'll see the non several message as well which will be blank so you'll also want to get rid of that so easy done we can just replace that with nothing replace all and we can get rid of the header And we could say that. Again, we'll just replace it with that. Replace all. Beautiful. We've now got lovely, clean, raw. In actual fact, I've got to get rid of these as well. But you get the idea. We're getting some very nice raw uh, log information. There's no other double quotes in this, so I can cheat in a way and just go anything with a double quote, just get rid of it altogether. Boom. So I could actually add that to my raw sample log. Oops. I'm not going to save that. Save that. So now, now I've captured some more raw data. Fantastic. So I can continue to use that for um, testing purposes. That's just one way to do it. There's lots of ways to, to capture that information. That's just how I like to do it. Um, completely up to you. So we've got our properties file. We've got we've we've got it we've tested against our test data and so forth. We should be pretty right to go. What I will highly recommend is when you come to run these things, 
don't when you're in test mode, don't run it as a service. It's just painful to go in and start and stop the service. Run it as an application. Um, make sure your properties file is in the right spot. So flex agent syslog. Uh, make sure it's got the right suffix as well. <clears throat> go into your agent data directory. Make sure that's deleted. Everything is deleted there. The thing that gets me every time I get hit by this every time is not looking at my syslog.properties file. Make sure that that's either processing the right type and if it's not, just delete the file. Just get rid of it. Okay, so we'll just happily delete the file because that will be rewritten next time we start the connector and it will be rewritten with new values. So there's no need to worry about it. Here's an example of an older one that got me really messed up. You'll see the syslog subagent definition for my lounge for my lounge room is Cisco router non-IOS syslog. Really annoying. So all my Apple stuff was appearing as a Cisco router, basically. Very, very annoying. So I kept that file deliberately so I could show you an example of what it should not look like. So a good way of understanding whether or not your events are being parsed properly is if you see see what's in syslog.properties. Again, don't be afraid to delete it. It will rewrite itself. All right. Now, one last thing I didn't tell you is, well, how do we get the connector to give us that raw event in the actual, in the actual uh, uh, Ceph event itself? As we know, Ceph is sliced and diced in many, many ways. Well, the way to do that is to simply go into your agent.properties file. And you can either do this through the GUI or you can, or you can do it, um, preserve. Yeah. Okay, I can't quite remember where that's kept. Can do is uh, run agent setup, and you can actually just specify it through the GUI. You can do it in the text file as well. I just can't remember where it, where it uh, where it lives. So run agent setup dot bat or or run agent setup from uh, from Linux doesn't really matter. It will boot up this. If you don't have X Windows, you'll get a, a, a CLI version of the same thing. Works very well. So where we want to go with this is modify connector and the thing to keep in mind here is that we're doing this on a per destination basis so you might send the raw event to logger for archiving and, and compliance purposes but then if you've got an ESN destination or some other destination you might not want to send the raw event because it's extra bandwidth extra storage it's not being used in any uh, particular analysis so there's no need to send it it's just a waste so we're interested in um, modifying a destination. That's why I choose the second one. I'm going to a, a logger. You can modify the parameters, which is the logger, the logger destination itself. I can modify the destination settings, which is what I'm interested in. Now, depending on the type of connector that you've got, you'll get a whole swag of uh, possibilities here. These are all covered in the, in the user guide for smart connectors, so I won't go through all of them. But one of the really interesting ones, and one that I encourage you to take a look at, is under the processing tab. This is where some really cool stuff is. This is the one we're interested in. Preserve raw event. Yes, please. I want to keep that. Turbo mode, aggregation, all those wonderful things. Even field obfuscation. Let's say you've got credit card numbers and so forth. They can be obfuscated. Um, Preserve, uh, generate unparsed events, yes please. You can even do per event integrity hashing, all the way up to SHA-512 if you wanted to. So if you have a very, very strong requirement for data integrity, for chain of custody, NIST 800 compliance, whatever it may be, we cover that as well. But anyway, there are hundreds of options in amongst uh, the connector framework, so I'm not gonna go into any into any great detail here. But once you've saved all that, that raw event uh, attach is going to be for that destination. So, ArcSight Agents. Load that up, that'll run the connector. 
Now again, you'll probably remember from other videos, <coughs> we're going to load up here. Now, <laughs> one of the first things you'll notice is I'm actually doing this in Windows, not, not in the Linux. Uh, this is all a Windows-based environment and uh, it was easier for me to just do it, do it in Windows because this is all, all to do with my, my home stuff. Um, as you remember, first event from ArcSight, ArcSight, beautiful. Um, that's what we expect. We've seen no error messages here whatsoever thus far. What I'm going to do now is to do a very quick test um, to get to get something happening is to actually take my iPhone and I'm going to put it into flight mode and I'm going to bring it out of flight mode and that will force a reassociation or disassociation and association with the, the wireless network. So I've done that. Here we go. First event from Apple Air, Airport Wireless. Apple Airport Lounge Room received. Great. That's a really good indicator that one, it's picking up the right sub-agent parser. Um, if it was picking up Cisco, uh, chances are I hadn't re I hadn't prioritized it properly. Or the regex that I've got is absolutely no good, and it's just completely failed, and it's gone on to the next sub-agent to try its own. It's, it's another piece of regex. Thankfully. Uh, it's using my regex now. If there's any problems, it's going to be within that that uh, subagent properties file here. If there are any problems, so let's see how that goes. So what I'll do here is I'll change it down to about ten minutes. Now we're going to get no results found for a little while because the way Logger works, as it ingests, it actually indexes as well and indexing is always just a little bit behind so instead of just dumping everything in there and the indexing occurring at search time uh, the first time that that particular data is searched against it is indexed as it comes in and that's why it can be very very efficient and fast and we understand exactly what the the uh, retention requirement is from a storage perspective straight off the bat it's a very 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 good way to go but you often see this pro this problem. You go, ah, hang on, I've started sending events. Why aren't I seeing them? Well, as I tell most people, give it a few minutes. Always give Logger a few minutes to start indexing uh, the the new events that have started coming in. Now, if your Logger is really, really, really busy, that can take five minutes. Don't be, don't worry. It's the events are all going in. Uh, the indexing just hasn't caught up because when we do a search, we're searching against indexed values, not not what was just hit the interface. So a little bit different. One thing I'll explain here is I've created a custom uh, field set. The reason why I've done that is uh, for debugging purposes, I want the raw event to be right up the top there. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to say uh, the source MAC address. I definitely want that now because that's the one that I'm really interested in. I'll grab that. I'll shove it up the top, so it's right in front of me. Um, I don't really care about the raw event anymore because I've, I've I've finished with that. I'll save that. Apple Airport. I'll save that. Now we're starting to get a couple of events coming, which is nice. And you'll see if I click down here, here's all the different uh, all the different uh, names, and you'll see that my string constant, a device disassociated disassociated within the wireless network and associated with with the wireless network, is working already. Great. Source MAC address. Great, that's been hit four times. That's my association and disassociation. So it looks like our flex connector is working pretty well straight off the bat. Apple Wireless is my product. Apple uh, Apple is the vendor, fantastic. Device version, I haven't given it one. That's just being plain lazy but on my part. So we've got what we need here. You'll see there, this, this is basically my associations and, and disassociations here over a, uh, yeah, a 30, 40 second period, as you can see. So, and source MAC address is not null. 
let's just get rid of the non-nulls or the nulls I should say and so there's my full uh, there's my uh, associations and disassociations right there let's just let's just customize that and we'll put the uh, the name I just can't remember where it is message now oh, there we go it's already in there that's why I couldn't see it on the left uh, we'll just move that down a little bit Like that. Done our field summary. And what we see there is a device disassociated, associated, disassociated. Beautiful. So already in a very short amount of time, I've got myself some very nicely parsed events. Now in Logger, as always, we can click on the little uh, the little plus button here and see the raw events, which is great. Um, and so we're basically done there. This flex connector works. Uh, the lovely part about it is I've got other vendors coming in, not just. Now I'm going to need a greater time range here two hours not just my apple Air, airport wireless on port 514 so in other words i've got my apple stuff coming in i've got well, i've got some stuff that i need to take a look at i've got uh, i've got my archive which is just internal auditing stuff um but there's also going to be there's obviously not a lot of it but you should we should also see some of the stuff from my firewall so in other words it's just another it's just another uh, um, single syslog connector, but I've expanded its capability to deal with stuff that we we don't necessarily deal with out of the box. So that's really great. So instead of having a, a flex connector listening on port 515 and then your standard syslog connector listening on 514, I've done the whole lot on a single port. So it makes it a lot more efficient use, which is fantastic. You'll see here some Cisco events. That's my old stuff that wasn't parsed correctly. So I hope this has been a benefit, a benefit to everyone. Again, make sure you get a copy of the Flex Connector Development Guide. It is extremely handy to have. The second file you should definitely have is the Flex Connector Token Operation Summary Guide. Uh, if you don't have a copy of that, um, shoot me an email, uh, Shane, shane.lily at gmail. Uh, I'd be more than happy to supply a copy of this. These, this has some very powerful functions in it. it makes life a very, very easy when you need to actually create a flex connector. So in summary, what we've done here is to basically create a syslog sub-agent that is treated in the same regard as any other syslog sub-agent for the, for the syslog smart connector. So it's almost like a mini a mini flex connector within the smart connector framework. It's a very clever way of um, being able to parse extra devices without actually writing a fully fledged flex connector and listening on a different port. So with that, I hope you've found it uh, useful. Please shoot me any emails and, and comments and queries and so forth. Again, I'll be writing more and more of these tutorials as I find time. Um, I'm hoping to do XML flex connectors and um, also database ones very, very soon in the, in the not too distant future. So thank you and have a great day.